So this video is going to show you how you can use R to create maps and then how you can fill in the different countries on those maps according to some data. It's a relatively straightforward process and we only need to do two use two packages to do the basics of this, ggplot2 and tidyversity, so the cleaning of the data before we analyze it. Of course, you only need to do that once. Once those packages are installed, you've got them, but you do need to pull them out your library for each session. What I'm going to do is actually um, do some maps based on vaccination rates for coronavirus. So I've got the data um, for vaccination rates for European countries. And I'm going to create a data frame that's called EU Vax, and I'm going to read in my CSV file. Remember, when you read in the CSV file, you need to change the path to where it sits on your computer. And this data can be found in the link below. So I'm just going to run in my CSV file, and this is what the data looks like. So we've got the region, and we've got percentage vaccinated. So what we need to do is get some coordinates for the essentially the entire world. So what we can do is we can use ggplot2, and to get map data for the entire world, so we're going to create a data frame that's called map data, and this is going to get map data for the entire world. If we run that, let's view that map data. So basically, this gives us longitude and latitude to map borders of every country in the world and include some sub-regions as well of different countries. So this is a huge spreadsheet. So what we need to do is now is combine this data frame with this data frame so i'm just going to going to still call this one map data what i'm going to do is i'm going to join using this left join command the map data so this world map data with my eu vax data and i'm going to use the column region which i have labeling the country here and the country here in both data sets. So now if you view my map data, we can see I've just added a new column essentially that's percentage vaccinated and you can see it's blank for all the countries that I don't have in my EU vax data set. So if I was to just map this now, it's going to be like give me the entire world, but there's going to be loads of blank places, just gray places. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new data frame that's called map data one and I'm going to filter map data and basically what I'm going to say is I'm going to remove anyone that is NA which has no data in my map data data set for percent vaccinated so this command here basically says get rid of anyone with NA for percent vaccinated in the map data to data frame. So if I run this now, and then I view my new data frame that I've called map data one, you can see now the regions are only ones that were also included in my EU Vax data set. So now I'm only going to be mapping people I have the percentage vaccinated data for. So then I need to make a map. Well, making a map is actually quite straightforward. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call it map1. And I'm going to use ggplot, my ggplot command. And I want the data frame to use to be map data one which is my filtered data. My aesthetics, I just want the x to be long, y is lat. What that means is I want you to plot the longitudes and the latitudes. So this is basically all these countries have loads of longitude and latitudes which allows me to draw the shape of the country. I have to have group equals group written in here as well. This just makes sure all the countries fit together neatly. You can see in map data one as well I've got group here. So this just makes sure that my countries that I'm sort of plotting on my map are all neatly fitted together. 
And then I ask for my polygon. And basically what I'm saying is I want you to fill my aesthetic. Hey, yes, Mike. So I want it to be filled according to percent vaccinated. And color equals black just means it's going to do a black line around these polygons around the colored in countries. So everything, all the countries are going to have a black line around them so they're clearly separated from each other. It will automatically give me a gradient for this fill as well. So let's run that. Let's view map one. We'll zoom in on that. There you go. Here's my map. So as you can see, it does a um, percent vaccinated. We have color coded here. The UK is doing the best here. Now you'll see we're missing countries. So for like the likes of Albania and uh, Montenegro is not there, for example, as well. And that's because we haven't got data in that EU data set for it. That's why they're excluded. You could include them as well um, in another way, but I'm just going to show you how to map the things we've got data for. So as you can see, this has produced our percentage vaccinated. So we can see the lighter countries are doing a bit better. The darker ones are doing a bit worse and so on. We can make some alterations to that map um, relatively straightforward. I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm going to create a new map, which is called map two. And so I just read in map one So read in the map I've created. I'm going to change my scale fill gradient. So how it colors things in. And I'm going to change its label to percent vaccinated. So rather than the column title of perk underscore vaccinated, it's going to say percentage vaccinated. Low scores are going to be yellow. High scores are going to be red. I've got no inf information for that given country. It's going to be grey. And then this, I'm going to get rid of the text on the axis. I'm going to get rid of the little ticks, little marks on the axis. I'm going to get rid of the axes, titles as well. And I'm going to get rid of the rectangular background as well to create map number two. There's map number two, so you can see changed my colors got rid of the longitude latitude label because it's not that really useful and now we can see which countries are doing better and worse and so on as well now of course that essentially does it for you and you can play around with colors you know you just look at gg plot for the color palettes and so on you could change variable names and so on one other thing i'll just quickly do um, is that you may wish to get a little picture a little logo of your research group or whatever in the corner of a map so this can be done relatively straightforward using a package that's called cowplot so again you'll need to install a package and pull out the library each time you use it so what i'm going to do is i'm going to add a logo to this map let's do that I'd use this command here, just write gg draw, and then add, and then draw image. So I'm going to basically take this image from my desktop. It's a picture of my dog, Bill. This is the position of it on the X axis, the position on the Y axis of the map. So if you view it as having an axis right in the middle there, and that's the size of the picture. So I can change the picture scale. I can make it bigger or smaller. And then I say draw plot map two. So that's just going to add this to my map as well. So again, you'd need to make sure the picture you're going to put on it has the right location. So I just click that, run that, and it takes a little moment, but then there we go. Here's my logo of my dog Bill smiling. Of course, you may have a different logo that you wish to put on your map. And we, you know, we can adjust this. So if I change that to 0.32, for example, run that, and you can see Bill's going to move across a little bit. So 0.35, let's move him across a little further. There we go. Lovely. So there's my little logo in the corner. So you can adjust the position. You can move it up and down and so on. And we could make them bigger or smaller, just using that scale map there. So we're just simply adding it to map 2. So that's how we could add a little logo to it as well. So that's basically it. And um, this is the first of a series of videos that I'm going to do based on some maps. I'll show you how to do animated maps and so on a bit further down the line. But hopefully 
you can see how really you can produce this map with this little bit of code really is all that's really required once you stitch together a few data sets and luckily you know with the map data command everything's automatic for you as usual the data and the code for this are found below the video and if you enjoy this please follow the channel on youtube for lots of other helpful r tutorials as well as things for spss and jasp as well